Um, my first guest this afternoon uh, uh, is Sandy Thom. Uh, Sandy is best known for a hit, I Wish I Was a Punk Rocker. Tonight, Sandy is giving a masterclass at the Academy of Music and Sound in Hitchin, which I've been telling her is very, very nice. Before she gets to Hitchin, she joins us in our studio's afternoon, Sandy. Afternoon, Roberto. Nice to see you. Good, yes, good to oh. see you too. Um, we were having a conversation because I first spoke to you when that first record came out, and it's just sort of, mm-hmm. cause it, you, you appeared on the internet, and that whole Sandy Tom movement spread like wildfire. It did, it did. It was. I was just telling the students yesterday actually that it was just one of those one of those times in life that you just uh, you know it's just one big whirlwind. But it was fantastic. You know, I got to do so many amazing things and travel the world and play shows all over the world, and you know, it was it was really a, a great time. Can you plan something like that, or did it just happen organically? No. No, you definitely can't. I think you can. I think you can make plans and and hope for the best. Um, but definitely, the results were it completely exceeded our expectations. So it was very much like taken by surprise, you know. But it was great. It was a great. When things like that happen, you just have to ride the wave, you know. It's one of those things because I had a call from a friend of mine who worked at Radio One. Says Rob, have a listen to this, and I, I thought, wow. And I passed. And everyone was talking to each other about this one song <laughs> and this new artist, which was you, of course. Right? Yeah. It was. I mean, it was phenomenal. Really phenomenal. And it really sort of set. You know, it laid the foundations for me to then go on like I have done, and you know, make another three records and continue to tour and and do everything that I've done. And it was, you know, I always say that it's not an exact science, and everybody has a different story. But mine's, you know, from the from the very beginning has always been full of full of interesting activity, and that was certainly that was certainly one of the most um, amazing parts of it. Uh, Hitching tonight for this uh, masterclass at the Academy of Music and Sound. What exactly will you be doing? I mean, I think I'm just talking to the students. The students are all 16 years and over. So basically it's it's um, introducing a, a singer-songwriter course um, into the curriculum. And, and I talk to them about my experience with the industry, which has both been on the major label side and also as an independent artist with my own label. So it very much gives it a kind of, you know, here's two sides of the coin. And also the creative aspects of songwriting and, and the process and everything. So it's just really... Um, I do my best to impart as much advice and wisdom on, on the students as possible to, you know, in, in, in their time of considering the Will course. Will you give them some of the scary truths? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think sometimes I, I'm 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 quite liberal with what I say, and you know, I have a lot of stories to tell, and and I don't hold back at times. And I think sometimes people are quite shocked at that because it is a very tough industry i mean yeah. i know people look at it and they look at these sort of reality shows which i don't think represent the music industry at all but if you're a proper musician singer songwriter mm-hmm. it's tough it is tough and, it, and it's a labor of love and i always say to people that if you want to choose this as a career make sure you're 100 percent certain and do it with all your determination because it's it's more of a life than a, than a job you know you live it but it is the most rewarding at the same time you know Massive success with I Wish It Was a Punk Rock. I'm going to play that in a minute. Was there a lot of pressure on you after that to follow it up? I think that, you know, we were just talking about it. I think sometimes when you have success with this, I mean, it, it was also, you know, 12 weeks at number one in, in Australia and places like that. It was number one in seven countries across the world. And I think when you have a song like that, there is, um, you do have a difficult a hill to climb afterwards to make sure that people understand that there's a lot more to you than just that song and I think with me um, it's been a gradual ascent but it's been over the last six years I've been working constantly and people now have a very different perception of me um, but there's still a lot of people out there who will know me for that one song but I always say it's better to be known for something than nothing mm. at all we're going to talk about your new album at the moment um, do you still enjoy what you're doing? Oh, absolutely. I enjoy it more now than I did at the, even at the beginning. Because I think I I understand the business better. I know what I'm doing more. I'm much more sure of myself, much more confident about this as a career, as a job. So when I do get to play, that's like my fun time. When I do get to perform, that's the part that I love the most. Is it is it easier, because of things like, well, obviously the internet, to make your own music, manage your own career and flog your own stuff? I think it's easier nowadays to cut out the middleman. I think that you have much more control over your own destiny, if you like. Um, and I think that, you know, the great thing about this course and everything is to, is to kind of, um, you know, re introduce the idea or, or even like change the people's perceptions of what 
take what is success you know what it's not necessarily signed to a major label get lots of money and make records it's a very different game that we play now so um i think that you definitely can be in control of of your own destiny and i think it's healthy because there's so much music now and so many people have an opportunity that everybody has to up the game you know to get the recognition so i think it's H- great hitching this afternoon talking to these young artists up and aspiring musicians about the reality of music but then you're in the states in early july aren't you well i live in the states so um i, I went over there for personal reasons because my i, I fell in love with a, with a with a boy and i went over and you know i followed my heart and so i end up i live in california now and um life's so, hard huh well you know what i've lived in a lot of places i'll tell you that and they're not all as pretty as california but um no, it's great. I love it. I'm very fortunate to live there. Um, so I go home on Friday. Yeah, and it's t- it took me two years to get my green card. So you know, I worked hard for it. Okay. Can I just ask you? I was watching one of your, well, following one of your tweets uh, last week. The Sopranos. You were a big fan, weren't you? I was. Yeah. I mean, my brother was like when we were growing up. I'm sure lots of people out there will know when you have a, an older brother. The older brother controls the TV. There's nothing you can do <laughs> about it. If you're if you watch TV yeah. with him, it's his shows. But in a, in a, it was great actually because we would watch. He was a real techie, so we'd watch a lot of Star Trek, and we'd always watch watch The Sopranos. And my boyfriend's from upstate New York. So and he's Italian, right? So it's like I, I get the I get the, 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 that kind of um, that kind of sense, yeah. So strange thing was a sad loss last week, James Gandolfi. I, I love I love the show. I Very loved, sad. Loved yeah. him, uh, but I know that part of New Jersey because my wife's got a lot of relatives there. In fact, I was offered a job by the mob many years ago. Yeah, I, I turned down. Thank God. Oh well, I think you could have had a very different life. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much longevity there would have been in that particular life working for the mob <laughs> in, in New Jersey. Uh, sitting by your side, before we play anything from by you, Sonny, is uh, a gentleman in dark glasses, very rock and roll, Mr. Bruce Findlay. Welcome to the program. Hi. Good afternoon. You yeah. used to manage Simple Minds. I did for many years, for twelve years. But I signed him to my label. It's, it's interesting um, watching and being with Sandy over the last couple of days. Um, are talking about her career and how it started. And I think the interesting thing was the internet, very early days of the internet and use of the internet and the fact it kind of went viral. And I think that was magic because that was kind of the indie mentality. But immediately a major record deal and major publishing deal and all the funding that goes with that and the pressure that goes with that having a massive hit single to follow up. And we were talking about that. And I said, you know, it's, it's a real drag when you're on a major record label. You could sell... 50,000, 100,000 records and not make money and be deemed a flop. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're an independent young guy, girl, or old for that matter, it doesn't matter, but independent, making your own record and make it, make it yourself relatively cheaply and press up a few copies or put it up on the internet and sell three, four, five thousand 5,000 copies, you make money. Mm-hmm. Sell 10,000 copies, you'll make a lot of money. Yeah. You know what I mean? So as you, success is, a, is, is an interesting thing. And I talk a lot at the colleges now, that, 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 um, the academy, about this very subject. And I think Sandy hit, hit the nail on the head. She had to learn the hard way, mind you. Bad management and <clears throat> some heavy dudes, you know, trying to control her, her career, which I think would have been difficult having met with Sandy <laughs> over the last couple of days. I don't think she would have been the easiest. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, you know, it's quite good to be empowered. And Sandy at least learned. It's taken maybe 10 years to learn it. And the nice thing about these academies is that you can learn it before you make the mistakes. Well, it's, it's also very nice, I think, that the fact that you know, someone who's managed a big rock and roll band mm-hmm. and someone who's a fantastic musician, singer, songwriter, can go back and actually speak to students mm-hmm. at these masterclasses. Because, you know, if I, was, if I was a young singer, songwriter, young musician, I'd want to be there this afternoon in Hitchin, listening to what you've got to say, learning from your experience. Do you know what? It's, it's great, actually, when you're talking. I mean, it sounds still very, very young and got most of her life ahead of her. Most of my life's behind me. But, you know, at my age, you know, when I'm talking to these kids and they're like, hey, you're quite cool, man. It's really <laughs> great. <laughs> Do you still really feel great. quite cool, Bruce? I've got, I'm cool. Yeah, I've got, I've got some cool grandchildren. You know, my, my son Felix has just started a Saturday rock and roll class playing guitar at uh, Johnny Tate's Academy in Edinburgh. And uh, yeah, I do. I like. I still go to a lot of gigs. I still like new do artists. They, but do they know your grandkids, for example, how cool no. you you no, were? They, no, they don't know anything about it. They just think I'm good anyway because I'm my granddad. Um, they don't know about my um, success in the past and who I was. I think sometimes their teachers 
their teachers' parents tell them. <laughs> Even the parents of the like my age. Talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> you spent a lot of money for yeah, their mind exactly, around. Exactly, yeah. So uh, I, I, I was reading that. an article by, by Rob Lowe, who yeah, apparently his children that. says they have no idea that he's a cool... To they, they, him, to their kids, There's he's just... Dad. Dad. Hang on a minute, kids. Wise up. It, your dad is Rob Lowe. How can you not know <laughs> who he is? Come on. Because he's a pin at the backside. That's what, <laughs> that's what kids think. My kids think, Dad, I don't give a damn about what you've done or who you are. Or, you know what I mean? You're still just Dad. And they love you anyway, despite the success. Can I ask you, Bruce, did you, did, were you in charge? Were you managing Simple Minds when they played the Milton Keynes Bar? I think it was, Absolutely. Okay. We did two nights. It was yeah, fantastic. Very, I've, they, got, I've nice. got a picture on my wall uh, 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 taken from an aircraft of the crowd below. I still think it's the most... Spe- I mean, the fact that it was custom-built, there were like 50,000 people in the that ground. That's amazing. It was spectacular. It was fabulous, yeah, we loved it. I want to go home tonight and listen to all Sandy's stuff and listen to my all Simple Minds <laughs> stuff again. It's that amazing. Milton Keynes thing was round about this time. It was, it was round about the longest day, I remember we yeah. called it. It right. was 21st of June or something. It was just two gr- just amazing nights. Yeah, it was good yeah. fun, yeah. Uh, Sandy, your new album is uh, Flesh and Blood. I've been le- reading the reviews. A lot of people really love this. Yeah, no, it's funny because, you know, it's the last three records since the first one came out have kind of been me you know rebuilding or or really kind of gaining a lot of people's respect and this last record was it was fantastic i made it in nashville and um, with rich robinson from the black crows and a couple of uh, fantastic musicians and um a uh, saxophonist called Bobby Keys from who plays with the Rolling Stones and then a lady called Buffy St. Marie oh. who I did a duet with who was one of my idols when I was younger um, and it was just one of those real kind of chance things that occurred and she was in the right place at the right time and she said yes and it was it was just brilliant so such an enjoyable album to make and you know even more to, to go out and perform live a lot of talent coming out of Scotland has been for a long time. I know. I mean, it's Aberdeenshire, where I'm from, you know, there's Emily Sandy. So she, I mean, it's hilarious when I listen to her speak, you know, you know, and, and I know where she's from and it's a very small little part. And then there's Annie Lennox is from Ellen, she's Aberdeenshire. And I'm, I'm from Aberdeenshire. And, and it's Scotland in general, I think, has got a lot of great it's talent. It's brisket. This is BBC <laughs> Three Counties. We've got two lovely guests in the south. And, and Sandy's been clutching her wonderful guitar all the time we're speaking. Yeah. Can you sing a song for us? Sure. This is uh, this is the title track. This is Flesh and Blood. Let's start to 
me up Let's start to rise above Cause we are for less You got to live like the last to love Cause we are not for less Amazing. That is just amazing. That, I tell you what, these microphones are geared up for speech, not music. And that just was brilliant. (laughs) Thanks very much. Well, (laughs) so what time are you in Hitchin tonight? Um, we're going to be around, I think, half six. Half six. Yeah. Who's, who's, that, who's that with the grey hair? That's Johnny. Yeah, Johnny, leave it out. So half six. <laughs> here. You were you were staying around the Aylesbury era last night. We were. Aylesbury's okay. Luton, not so much. <laughs> but Hitchin, you're going to go. You're going to love it. And Meg, you've got to go down a storm there tonight. Let me tell oh, you. Oh, I think it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, we're, we're really excited. New album is uh, Flesh and Blood. No wonder they're raving about it. It's absolutely fantastic. Sandy, so oh, pleasure. So nice to meet much. you at last. Uh, wish you all yeah. the best. Um, and Bruce, thank you. Oh, uh, it's pleasure. Nice and if you look back you. in the videos of the concerts, there's some sort of nutter dancing in the background. It was, oh. it was Do you know what's nice about being in here is you don't say, we're just going to take a short break for these messages. <laughs> it's so yeah. nice not to have these breaks. Thank God for the BBC. Oh, to be honest with you, I did have some short messages. I've did just de- I've just deleted them. It was so nice talking Excellent. to you. I thought, who wants to listen to the messages? Yeah. Let's listen to Sandy and Bruce. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Uh, can we all follow you on Twitter? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, Sandy underscore Tom facebook.com slash sandy tom and then it's just sandy tom dot com all right <laughs> it's and if your grandkids need to know how cool you are right tell them to text me and i'll tell them straight away Good how cool <laughs> your career has been thank you so much thank you very have a much. safe journey to hitchin and if you're attending that master class at the academy of Hit- music and sound hitchin tonight you're gonna love it oh i wish i was a punk rocker with flowers in my hair in 77 and 69, revolution was in the air I was born too late into a world that doesn't care Oh, I wish I was a punk rocker with flowers in my hair When the head of state didn't play guitar, not everybody drove a car When music really mattered and when radio was king When accountants didn't have control